Over the past several years, we've brought in over 100 office chairs that we've rated and reviewed. So our team has selected 20 chairs, and we're just gonna run through them here, give them a rating from S all the way to F. Ergo Chair Pro. From Autonomous. $500 chair. Initial thoughts here from me would be somewhere here. Thinking like a D? I, I don't love the chair. Um, mm. It's definitely lower quality, and I think that the, it's quite a bit overpriced for what you're getting. The reason why it got so popular is Influencer marketing for sure. I mean they push that chair out to a lot of people So a lot of people with them in their setups when it was a lot less expensive I think it probably had a lot more value add to it But now that it's about 500 bucks. I think D is a pretty safe bet. Joe, you're in the chair right now I haven't sat in this chair in a while and something that I Forgot about is it's kind of hard to adjust the chair feels feels kind of junky. Not gonna lie, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Joe. Joe coming in hey, hard this, on the this, first chair. Hey, we gave it a D, maybe an F. So. All right, moving on to I guess our branded chair. Looks like the BTOD Akir chair. Oh, I mean, this is our chair. It's S. Boom. There it is. Right it's to done. the top. It's done. <laughs> Best value, five hundred bucks. <laughs> Being realistic, I'd have to say probably there yeah i'd go c probably a c tier chair i mean it's got a good weight capacity good warranty good return policy because of us uh, it's comfortable but it's still going to be an imported chair that there's chairs that are going to be better than it for sure in the b level that are coming from top tier manufacturers i can't see going higher than c yeah the highlight of the chair is definitely the seat all right what do we got up next the eurotech ergo human chair we got this a lot is of experience the aaron killa this is a 15 year old chair when it came out it was probably the closest thing to an aaron but it isn't anything like <laughs> an Aeron, so that's kind of funny. What does this thing retail for? Like just under a thousand bucks now? I, between nine hundred dollars and a thousand bucks. And my initial feeling would be there. A little bit better built than the Akira chair, but it's just so it's not enough to be into the B category. So if we could micro this down a little bit, I'd say the Akira might be like a C or a C minus, and the Ergo Human would be like a C plus. Like there's a slight gap there, but not huge and, and we're looking at the all mesh one now which i i personally would never sit in because the <laughs> yeah. mesh is extremely uncomfortable and what is our I can opinion hear Joe from... clicking around in yeah. the chair over there so he's really getting after it he can't get something locked in so it was a little confusing at first i don't sit in this chair very often but joe's our in-house expert the mesh is uh is a little loose there's back support there, which you don't get a lot from other chairs. Yeah, that's the highlight, the lower back support. And all of the, it does have a ton of adjustability. Yeah. One of the weird things, though, about that chair that I think, you know, is pretty common with the Chinese imported products, they tend to sit really tall, so they're made for taller people. The problem with that chair is that the headrest doesn't suit a tall person, so it's a little bit confusing. So that one comes with the headrest. It's just something to consider. All right, up next, we've got the Eurotech Vera chair. Initial opinions here. I'm feeling similar vibes to what we said about the Akir in terms of build quality and where it would be. That's a prime example of a C-tier chair. I mean, it's just, it, it's better than the Ergo chair. Yeah. We could actually just put them in order of quality here. So like I would do this. My opinion, it would be this one, then this one, then yeah, this Ergo one. Yeah, Ergo Human, the C -tier. Akir, and Vera. They're pretty close. Flexi spot. Do you know Ooh, how to pronounce it? The Soutine. Or is it the Soutian? We'll never know. Joe. Joe's not. Joe he can't hasn't, find he the hasn't found the Soutine. Soutine. Don't tell him, Robert. <laughs> Just say you. Yeah. See, I'm not moving this chair because I want to get Joe's reaction first because I know exactly where I want to put this chair and I want to see. I would put it on a very lower tier um, and it's firm. What do you think of that lumbar? It's a little intrusive, I would say, for me. Yeah, overall, I'm not too comfortable in this chair. So are we saying that's a D, or are you going all the way to the F? I would say, I mean, I would rather sit in the Ergo Human than this one. It sounds like Joe's somewhere down here. It sounds like he wants to say F, but he doesn't want to be too mean. So I'm going to do it for him, because in my opinion, this is an F-rated chair. Basically because, for me, when I used it, it was just unusable. The lumbar support was so intrusive that I couldn't even get the it, top of my back against the backrest. Either. And it has this weird tilt mechanism where you have, like, two options that are loose and really loose. Mm. It's hard to put a $300 chair in the F tier. It has to be pretty bad. I, maybe we give it, we could give it a D minus, but I'm feeling- I'd say you let it roll on the F. I'm feeling F vibes from, yeah, from F this vibes. one. Ooh, we got a high end chair coming out. Hayworth folks. Fern. I mean, I don't think I'm wrong when I just bump it right up to the A tier. Ooh. What is this, a 12 to $1,400 chair? Yeah, $1,350 bucks It's Hayworth's right highest end ergonomic chair right now. Yeah. The Zodi isn't on our list because it's not quite as popular, but I actually think the Zodi is slightly more comfortable. I didn't love the seat on the Fern, and the lumbar is a little aggressive, but our office 
likes it quite a bit. And most the people disagreed was, with was me. Pretty awful. With a brand like Hayworth, you would assume that it should be A tier because they're a top of the line manufacturer, but I would put it B. You'd put it B? Yeah. I know some other chairs that are probably in that B range that are gonna be equal to or a little bit better. I personally like this chair. Uh, The headrest is a little too firm. It's a good looking chair. It'll make whatever desk setup look sharp regardless. What do you think of those armrests? You think those feel pretty solid? They feel more plasticky than like the steel case armrests. So they don't feel like as nice, but they still have a lot of movement, a lot of adjustability. So I appreciate that. You think A or B for you? We went. I give it an A. I put it in the A, but it's an A minus. Even though I don't think it's super comfortable, I I would maybe have to lean towards maybe an A minus too. I can see I can see a B as well. So that's a fair. Next up, the most popular of the popular. I mean, from name recognition alone, I think a lot of people are expecting us just to throw it right up here in the A tier. Likeability and comfort, especially in our office. I don't know if I'd rank it an A, I'd probably rank it a B in terms of comfort and the support that it offers and how many people in our office actually like to use it. From a pure build quality and look standpoint, it's certainly an A, maybe even an S. I think it's tough. I mean, that's definitely like the most well-known chair in the world. And I think it's very well built, comes with an awesome warranty, but it's got a huge price tag. And I think it's uncomfortable, but I just don't like to sit in mesh chairs. It's probably well-deserving of A tier. So I'd probably leave it there just so that you guys don't. It's an A. Just don't listen to them. It is an A. (laughs) Robert loves the Aeron. And so this is a hard high ranking from him. We're not going S though, are you, Robert? Because you, you sit in the celly over the Aeron, right? I think it's right? a cella. I, I'll give it just an A. Okay. Just an A. That's fair. It is one of the highest end chairs. Even though me and Greg personally don't like to sit in it, it's a really good chair. It's got, it's got it the smooth recline yeah. and everything about it is just well built. Next up, we've got the Embody, also from Herman Miller. Probably similar vibes. Maybe a little less polarizing than the Aeron. I like Herman Miller as a brand, and I think their chairs are very nice, but I can't sit in any of them. I just, that hurts my shoulders, pushes me forward. I, I think it's well, it's well built, and it's just like the Aeron. It's just super unique, and I think it's probably deserving of an A tier. For me, I would put it in an A tier just because I do find it comfortable. It is one of the three chairs that I've kind of rotated through over the past three or four years here. In terms of build quality, it doesn't quite have the adjustability packages like the Aeron or the Leap or even like the Fern, but it was adjustable enough for me to be comfortable. For me, it feels like it's an, an A quality product just because it is super high end. If we were ranking these just by pure comfort, I think the list would look quite a bit different. I'm gonna let Joe tell me where he thinks this chair belongs. Embody, Joe. The design's very cool. I think the science behind the back, the, yep, the pixel support I think is like a pretty cool feature. Yep. I take this chair out of an A chair solely because of the arms. You can kind of go up and down and you can do a little bit of width, but it's clunky. Clunky is the best way to describe the arms because like you said, you're only getting width adjustment and height adjustment and it takes quite a bit of effort to do that width adjustment. We hold them firm with an A. Yeah, I mean, I, I probably, I'd feel bad putting it at a B. Yeah, so. me too. Another big th- brand. Throw a bone to Herman Miller, you know they need it, right? <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure they need all the help they can get. <laughs> human scale, Ooh. human scale freedom. This is a chair that I- We're just going straight to B. So badly wanted to like, I would put this chair at a C and the reason why I put this thing at a C, it's like totally, you wouldn't expect this because it's supposed to be a very well built chair. It's a constant creaking and tweaking as you're sitting. It's super annoying. Are you picking up that noise on the camera? Joe's in it right now. It is so uncomfortable to recline. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It has a very unique recline where it puts you into this like neutral ergonomic position, which is nice for full-fledged tasking, but not great for like relaxing, re- lounging, or constant movement. But it, so if we're looking at this from a value standpoint, they're very expensive. They're like twelve hundred and fifty dollars. I think the warranty is okay for a chair at twelve hundred and fifty bucks. The lumbar is pretty pretty aggressive. I think people like that. It's got a pivoting backrest that's pretty unique for lower lumbar support. The headrest is terrible when you recline in it. You almost have to work in like a halfway recline position to make it comfortable. You can't adjust the arms independently height wise, so you're locked into whatever, which was a deal breaker for me using it. I think it's better than the chairs in there. It's at the top end of the C, but I don't think it makes it to B. I don't see it as an equal to like a fern chair. Here we go. Ikea Marcus. Ooh, that's a great chair, isn't it? The Marcus is definitely a D tier chair. Honestly, for the price, it's not bad. It has a nice recline, 
the backrest is okay. I hate the lumbar. And unless your head lines up with the headrest, that can be a problem. But the seat is decently comfortable, a little bit narrow, and it doesn't have seat depth adjustment, which could be a problem. Um, the armrests are pretty terrible. I feel like a villain in a superhero movie. <laughs> it's too tall. I can see you right now, and I yeah. can see that it, it's tall. I feel yeah. like a villain. Yeah, that's true. Wow. Yeah. It's and your tall. arms are permanently pitched up. It's too big. The chair is too big. But it's, what is it? Like 200 and how much was that? It's like 300 bucks. 300 bucks. Yeah. So you're not going to get a ton. One year out of a return $300 policy chair. on that thing. You could have it for nine months and return it, get all your money back. Which is insane. Yeah. I will say that even though the Soutine has more adjustments and it costs more, I'm still, I'd, I'd go with the Marcus. Well, and the, the beauty of a Marcus chair, really anything from Ikea, is that you can go and try it out in person, which can be difficult with a lot of these chairs. There's not a great chair store for everyone in every market. So, ooh, no regeneration. Initial thoughts right out of the gate? It feels like the human scale chair in that it's not like a top tier product, even though it comes from a top tier brand. Yeah, I'd say that's like a B minus C plus best case. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't even feel like it weighs anything. Joe, pick that thing up. I will say that even though it is really lightweight, <clears throat> it feels like they did a better job <laughs> with keeping it lightweight, but still making it feel like there was Substance. something there, but you're not going to get the same adjustment packages as like even the fern right here. So if we were going to put it here, it would definitely be B minus and it'll probably end up out here somewhere. What adjustments does it even have on it? Well, Seat slider? Yeah. Adjustable and then, arms? Yep. And, and what else? The it, tilt, some type the locking of tilt. positions and the... So maybe it is C. C. I'm going We got to bump it. I thought it had more adjustability than just that, but yeah, you're right. It doesn't have lumbar. I don't really like the recline very much because it kind of... It has a recline like the human scale chairs where it puts you more in like a neutral position, yeah. right? Yeah. It feels like my hips go up when I recline. Yep, it pushes your hips up. And I'm not crazy about that. It has a solid warranty. Yeah, it does have a solid warranty, so. and it is coming from Noel. It is a, the components felt solid. I, we're going B minus if you get the fully decked out version. I personally think this is one of the most underrated chairs. Wow. <laughs> okay. A hot take from Robert. You need to explain a little bit here. I think it's quite comfortable. It's got a firm seat, but I like the recline, and for like that poly back, it's. I thought it was very comfortable. I do remember the backrest being pretty comfortable, that like rubber-like feel. Coming in solid B minus okay. with Robert's take. There we go. Robert helping you out, Noel. Neutral posture, 8,000. This got thrown in here because it's from, from a pretty reputable brand, and it has been a really <laughs> go-to product for our, the guys in our sales team. Drop it in a B right now. Yeah, that's where it belongs. I think, I think it's probably where it belongs. It's, it's good quality, but not as good as the top tier stuff and i wouldn't put it as the same quality as like a hayworth fern but i'd say it's definitely better than a c highly adjustable ton of adjustment good quality options. foam i mean you can do all kinds of things with those chairs contoured seats yep. flat seats nope. i mean there is a tremendous amount of options with that particular good warranty product. too yeah so up next we got the office master om yes chair going hard c on this yeah hard c I don't know if I'd put it ahead of the Akir. I, I think it's about equal, honestly. I think from a seat comfort standpoint, they're pretty similar. I think there's just a little bit more substance in the seat of the S chairs. One yeah. of the most customizable chairs you can get for the $500 range. We're talking different mechanisms, different arms, all sorts of different color combinations, headrest options. That might push me. It's got a coat hanger. Coat hanger attached. Wow. Coat, I can so. hear Joe trying to figure out how to adjust it. What adjustment are we working on over there, Joe? Um, just working on the arms a little bit. Um, I think that the thing that I don't like most about this chair is this. There's a lot of play in Office Master chairs, and that's because of what I just touched on. The customizability, having the chair too. being able to accept so many different variations of parts means that there's a lot bigger tolerances than, say, on an Aeron. It looks like we had a gaming chair sneak into our list. That's the Titan, right? This isn't going to be the Omega. Secret Lab Titan. Obviously the best chair on our list. Secret Lab makes probably the best chairs on the planet. And so if you According want the best chair. According to the chair, influencers, that is an S tier. <laughs> yeah. Put that in the Ergo chair if in the you, S and let's just call this a wrap. If you follow Instagram, YouTube, S tier. And if you give a review on there, they'll <laughs> guarantee it for life. Yeah. 
or is it five years? It's five years. Okay. You get two extra years on that warranty. Positive review only. Um, what are we thinking? We thinking low C's or high D's? You know, I the think funny there's thing, aspects of both. The funny thing about this chair, I think it's well built, you know, for that type of 500 bucks. I really think it's a well built chair. And for a gaming chair, if the seat wasn't so hard, I'd actually be able to sit in it because it doesn't feel like the side bolsters restrict me. But the problem with this chair is that the seat is way too firm. So I just, I can't. So I'd put in a C tier. I think it's a solid chair. I think C tier is fair. For sure, the best gaming chair we've ever tested, and that's racing style gaming chair. Racing ch style gaming chair. So we put yeah. that out Bucket there. seat design yeah. style. There's but, Aerons and Embodies out in the world. Yeah, those are for gaming now. So it has good, good components. I don't love, I mean, the mech's not super high quality. And some of the components aren't super high quality, but I think C tier is fair. Staples, hiking. I've never seen a chair come into our office that has multicolored mesh because of the low quality mesh. And this is one where there's like this yellowing that you can see coming from underneath. But for the price, you know, they give a solid warranty. It's at Staples, so they've got a good return policy. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. So, Listen, I mean, for me personally, I mean, that's the thing about chairs. For the adjustability and the warranty that you get for the price, it's a very good value. But we're talking a chair that's under $200 that is certainly one of the most uncomfortable chairs that I've sat in to come through our office because the seat is so uncomfortable and the arms don't really do it for me. And so for me, this would probably be right here with the Soutine as like an F. I'd put it at D just because of the warranty. It's That's true. It actually bucks. has a better warranty than the Soutine. And it's more comfortable than the Soutine. It is more comfortable than the Soutine. I'd say D, D minus would be my opinion here. Joe, what do you think? If this chair was any more than $200, it would be an F for sure. <laughs> Hard take. I love Joe's take though, because it's just so real, because I, that's the truth. Like if this was priced at the Soutine, it would probably be down here as an F because of what Joe just said. It's, you're not getting a ton of value, but because it's $200, there's something there. Joe, if you want to take that home when we're done with this, you can have it. I sit in a Vera at home, I'm very comfortable. You're Vera comfortable? Yes, that was a pun. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The best puns are the ones you need to explain. <laughs> Steelcase gesture. Is this the first Steelcase chair? I mean, there you go. That's all you need to know. Not much debate there. This is one of our highest scoring chairs over the past couple years. It offers almost everything that you could ask for in an office chair. I mean, some people do complain that the seat is a little bit thin, a little bit firm. That's probably the biggest complaint. And not a significant amount of lumbar support. So if you like right. real pronounced lumbar, it doesn't have it, but it's got the most ridiculous armrest. And it has a ton of flexibility in both the seat and the back, which is kind of the new age design with office chairs. Just overall, super well-made chair, awesome warranty, just pretty much all around one of the best chairs that we've tested. So good fit for most people. Steelcase Leap, straight up to A tier. I mean, you guys know what we think of the Leap. <laughs> I mean, I think one of the things you got to think about with these chairs, though, it's kind of like the Aeron. I mean, these chairs have been, this one was, it first came out in 2006 in the V2. I mean, these chairs from 2006 are still in the field being used. Same thing with the Aeron. I mean, those are even older, up to 28 years old. They are still in the field being used, whereas like some of these other chairs, like the Soutine, I could see that chair going to a garbage dump in three years. The value you get when you spend the money on the top tier chairs is definitely worth it. Everything is adjustable. It's probably the best chair for most people out of the box, which doesn't mean it's good for everyone. It right. just means it's highly likely that it will fit everyone. And I mean, some people might be surprised that we don't <clears throat> have the leap here because this has been our number one ranked chair over the past couple years on basically all of our lists when it comes to comfort and ergonomics. But the fact is, is that <clears throat> it's not perfect. The headrest on it is really poor. The lumbar support is aggressive. And, so, the, and the seat pad's a bit thin. Right, and the seat pad is too thin. That's why you don't use it. Yeah. That's why Greg doesn't I, use the leap. I use it at home because I don't sit as long. But I don't use it at, at the office. I use it in a Mia chair. Three in a row, steel case, series one. If we're going to put the human scale chair and we considered putting the regeneration in the C tier, I think the series one is like a kid's chair. It feels cheaply built. Like it's just lightweight. There's not a lot of substance there. If even steel cases said that it's not a good chair for sitting all day in, it's not like one of their workhorse chairs. I'd put it in C. I think it's on the high end of C. I think it's probably better built than the human scale. It doesn't make as much sound. And for a chair that's less than $500, 
it's still pretty good value in my opinion. You're still getting steel cases, warranty, their support. I, like I said, I'm not a bigger guy, I'm a smaller guy, so this chair at sizing really isn't too much of an issue for me. Quality wise, I prefer this over both the human scale or the knoll. Um, I think it's a little smoother of a recline. I think that the adjustability feels a little higher quality. Except for those arm pads. Arm pads are trash, but for the other steel case chairs, I mean, in comparison to the other steel case chairs, these arm, these you arm pads. You don't need to qualify it. Compared these, to all chairs, they're pretty bad. The arm pads are small and they're hard plastic. So there's no redeeming characteristics. All right, so we've got a really low priced chair next. This is your classic under $100 chair, the Leatherette Special with the fixed arms, swivel tilt, really basic. This is a hard F. Yeah. You see these all the time. Really thin seat pad, just junk. It's a year and you throw this in the garbage. Basically every big box store is going to have a chair like this from, I don't know, 40 to 80 bucks, somewhere around there. And it's going to basically do almost nothing like Greg said, but useful for those offices that are basically just offices that don't get used, I suppose. Maybe for this could be someone's half an hour to an hour, yeah. I guess. If it's a workhorse, it's not going to last more than, like you said, a six year. months or a year. That's what happens. Last up, we've got X chair, and we're specifically going to rank the X2. I mean, I'm tempted to uh, throw it right down here at D because it was probably one of the most uncomfortable chairs I've ever used. From a pure build quality standpoint and adjustability standpoint, it might deserve a, a C. So that's where I'll put it now. I mean, my biggest issue with the X chair is the fact that they have a terrible warranty. After a certain period of time, they're covering less of the chair and requiring you to pay for things until it just is nothing. Look at it from the standpoint that it's pretty similar to like an ergo human chair and they have a much better warranty. I can't put a chair that's about a thousand dollars up in the C tier that has a warranty that bad. It's just hard for me to say from a value standpoint. And not only that, it was super uncomfortable. Literally one of the most uncomfortable chairs that we tested and that was across the board. So we, we score from zero to 100 on arm comfort, back comfort, seat comfort. And for all three categories, it was right near or at the very bottom. And this is after looking at, like we said, dozens upon dozens, over a hundred chairs. Very, very disappointed when we got it and tested it because, like Greg said, I think we paid like 900 bucks for it. Yeah. All of these chairs up here are going to have better warranties. Most of them have similar to or more adjustability. And I would argue that all of them are more comfortable, including the Titan. I would for sure sit in the bucket seat design Titan over the X chair X2. As we're talking about that, I wonder if we bring the Titan down just because the fact that it has a two year warranty, unless you give them a shout out on social media. I mean, that's. Yeah, you know what, Secret Lab? D tier. We got to change that up. You can't be making people do yeah. outreach or <laughs> yeah. for their warranty. That just brings you down a full tier for doing that. What do you, what do you, what do you think of that X chair? First, I'll say I think it's very uncomfortable. There's like the weird backrest like is for $950. not for me. Yeah. So if someone came up to me and said, I'm going to spend $1,000 on my office chair, there would be zero times out of 100 that I would recommend the X chair. If, if you're spending $1,000, don't buy this chair. It'd be so dumb. <laughs> yeah, that's a fair assessment. Maybe if you went with the upholstered seat, with the padded seat, it'd be a little bit more comfortable. But you'd still be around, I mean, then it's probably well over $1,000, and you're still getting a warranty that's like, it's not even a full five-year warranty. It's, and then maybe that's why the Secret Lab makes it back up to the C, because it's half the price, and it's got the same warranty. So maybe that, that we'll keep it there. All right. Sure. It wasn't worth a full tier drop, but Secret Lab... We've got our eye on you. If you guys let us know in the comments if you agree with this and if you liked it. Or if you want us to tier other chairs that aren't on the list, put the chair in the comments. We'll give it a tier rating.